Hey, good morning and welcome. This is going to be the first of a series of YouTube videos talking about what you can and can't do on your Land Rover. So in this case, what we're actually going to do today um, is to remove a tow bar that I've put on this car. Uh, the reason why I'm doing that is we're selling the car, uh, the tow bar's mine, and I'm buying the same car again, so I'm going to replace the tow bar onto the new car. So that's just some of the equipment you need. Um, I've got a good ra quality ratchet set there. Um, we only need about three or four different pieces from that. We don't need that much. Got a torque wrench uh, and a torx bit uh, set there. Some of those torque bits you won't need all of them. Um, I've just got a, a large set there, but I think probably only need a T27 and a T30. In front of me here, I've got the under tray. Uh, I'll explain more about this as we go along, but I didn't bother putting it back on when I put this tow bar on because there's a large part here that you can see uh, between these lines here. That you'd have to cut out to allow the detachable tow bar bit to to poke through that's what they do in the factory um, because of course i'm selling this car on i didn't want that cut out um, so i didn't bother putting this piece back on and as you see under the car uh, it's just as clean as when we got it and then in this bag i've just got the screws nuts and bolts and brackets that um, we used uh, that came off the car uh, which we've obviously preserved and we'll go back onto the car Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to start, uh, we're going to remove and lower down this exhaust, okay, to allow us space to get to get up here. Now, there's a, a 10 millimetre nut there, which we're going to undo. So if you so just put this on here. Slacken this off. It shouldn't be on any really much more than hand tight. And as you can see, this car under here, we've used this for a year now, this car. And uh, it's all quite clean under here. It's survived quite a lot of snow and rain. Uh, it's as clean under here, really, as when it left the factory. So there's real no need to put this uh, underguard back on if you want to preserve your original bumper line. So that's that nut out. That's nice and loose. And then what I've also done here, as you can see, we've got the trolley jack here that's just up just resting and holding this um, exhaust up just to take the weight off it okay and then we've got another nut just the same on the other side just again undo that pop the nut out the bolt out as you can see here okay that's out okay that's loose Okay, just lift that off the top. We'll do the same on the other side. Just lift it off so it's nice and free. And then we'll just lower this down on the jack here. Focus, focus. Okay, we're lowering that down now. Uh, as you can see, what I've got here, this gives us plenty of room to work up underneath here. It's quite light. Move the jack out of the way and then just get a suitable piece of wood okay well that's just taking the weight on that and there's no strainer anywhere on the exhaust system as you can see right okay so we've just slapped them off underneath um, part of removing the bumper what we've got to do really is we've got to remove the light here prise off some of this trim on the outside uh, and then there's a whole series of nuts and bolts underneath uh, I think about eight or nine off the top of my head um, and, and then we can take the bumper off. So first thing we'll do on this side is you've got this air vent cover here and um, just put your hand in behind pull it open and pull it off like that. You can see that it's just held on with these little lugs here that tuck in behind the carpet and then this just uh, pulls in and holds it tight against the, uh, the trim there on the inside. Put that safe to one side and then same on the other side here. Now this side has a little bolt fixing uh, that just turns so just turn that through 90 degrees pop the screwdriver in as you can see it pops off. Some of you obviously may already have used that to uh, get into the fuse box at some point. So up here we've then got another, this is this nut that you can see here on this spring. This actually holds this outside light in place. So what I've got there is I've just got a long 10 millimeter ratchet socket. Um, you could use a screwdriver if you wanted to get in there. Personally, um, I just find it easier to put a ratchet on. Pop that on. In. So this should shouldn't be held at any great tightness at all. Okay. As you can see, should now just be able to work this out hand tight. 
Um, if it drops down, it's not really a pain because there is enough access to get in underneath. Okay, and then as you can see, that comes out. Makes you just put that safe to one side. Okay, and then what you should be able to do now is just grab a hold of this line, just pull it forward, rock it a little bit. Okay, uh, what you're trying to do is you're trying to. There's a couple of lugs here that you're forcing it out against, but it's all quite simple. It pops out. And then you then have the electrical fixing here that you can see. And you can just remove that. There's a little, little fang there. Just pull down, pull the two plugs apart. That's you done. Pop that in there. Okay, next step is to do the same on the other side. Now, as you can see, this one is a bit more trickly located up in the top, hence why the need for uh, a long nut. But as you, you can put it in there, probably do with this one. Just use a short extension bar, just because it makes it easier to get in there. As you see, you can bend the, the spring screw a little bit. Same as we've just done on the other one. do it. There we are. I've got my body against the light anyway so there's no way it would it would fall out. Grabbing hold of it, pull it out. Just held in there with that little screw clip. Finger in. Pull it out. That's you done. Now, why have we opened that? Why have we opened that up? Well, first off, as you can see, there's a little screw here that we'll need to remove uh, and also allows you a bit of access when supporting the bumper in a minute. So the next step here now is to remove this side trim. Now this is quite simple. You just get your hands behind here like this, push on there and you just pull it out. And as you can see, it's held in a couple of spring clips. Now this car has um, the automatic parking system, so it has parking sensors here. I think if you have the normal parking system, you just have the ones on the rear, you don't have this um, side fitting. You don't need to release any more than that. Um, and then when you come to put it back in, as you can see, those yellow and blue clips just go straight back into there, having tucked this little lip under there, and it'll pop out. So we'll just unscrew, unscrew that bolt now. Again, I think it's another 10 millimeter. Probably done like that in the factory just to make it easier for all the guys putting it together. Yeah, as you can see, that is a 10 mil. No, it's not a 10 millimeter. Yes, it is, it's just not very tight. Okay, we just undo that. Okay, pop the nut down there. And, and then, all you do is you put your hand in behind and you'll be thinking, God, this is a bit, a bit brutal. You just quite literally pull the bumper out from where these plastic, this plastic ridge line here sits just on top of a series of, of thangs and clips there. And that is that side of the bumper released. And the final bit to release at the bottom is there's a screw here. Now, obviously I've got mud flaps on this car. Um, if you don't have mud flaps, uh, it's still there, but this holds in, is held in obviously slightly further back. Undo that screw, and that's this side of the bumper released. So what I'll do is I'll do the same on the other side, and then I'll come back to you with showing you where the, the bolts are underneath. The next step is to um, remove this nut, remove this little plastic uh, clip that secures the bumper into the rear cross frame, and then we've got a couple of bolts underneath. So these bits here are very simple. Just get a screwdriver in there, a plastic trim remover, pop them out, and that's what it looks like. Let's pop that safe inside. Put it there. Take your screwdriver, just put it in. Uh, undo it there. safe and sound with the other bolts that match on that side. Again, 
this one here. It's not going to fall off, don't worry about that. There's a um, couple of bolts underneath. Okay, pop that over that side. The only thing uh, I didn't show you on the last step, and I'll show you on this side here, whilst we've got the light, is you just need to remove okay, the parking sensor thing if you've got it here. So there's a little grey tab behind. You just slide that out it's like a locking pin and then this should says, just pop out. It can only go back in one way so you don't need to worry about it uh, going in wrong as you can see. Square at the top, round at the bottom but it's shaped like that and that means when we pull the bumper off uh, we're not going to have any wires left to the back of the car here. This can just hang here as you can see. I think it might not come out but that's fine. I'll just do the same on the other side. So don't worry about that. If one of those clips falls out, uh, we just put, we'll just put it back in uh, at the end. Right, so. Just pops out as you've got it there. So that's nice and free. Okay, the bumper's free here. Whilst we're at the top of the car, what we'll do now, we just grab this trim underneath, just give it a sharp tug up. And all you're doing is just freeing up these metal clips here that uh, belong in the various holes on the metal panel at the back. Chuck that over the back. Whilst you're here, you can also take this out. Now, uh, uh, as you can see, um, our car here does not have a spare wheel. Um, we've got the normal standard fit kit. This lifts out. If you've got a spare wheel, you may have to do um, something different. Um, in terms of the trim coming out, but that's what you do on this car. Take that out, put that over to one side, as you've got there, uh, and then the electrics in this case just plug into this hole here. Okay, we'll deal with that in a minute, show you how that comes through. So let's go down underneath the car now. What we've got left. Uh, is two nuts to undo. There's one here, one on the opposite side. Again, very convenient for Land Rover, with just a 10mm. Uh, I should have said at the start, of course, it's always a good idea to do this on a car you've left overnight so the exhaust isn't hot. Um, clearly, you don't want to be getting burnt. Uh, you know, the amount of heat that will radiate off this. So, this car's been stood overnight. Uh, so I need to go and do the other bolt now. Yeah, so you don't want to be you don't want to be doing this uh, on a car that's just finished uh, a run somewhere, especially if it's been doing any particle filter regeneration, because this could be up above 400 degrees Celsius. So just be practical and careful there. But I'm sure everybody who's doing this has a degree of common sense. Anyway, there's a couple of bolts in here as well. That we just need to unscrew. As you can see, again they're not tight. Now if you uh, normally I like to just make sure I store all the bolts in the right order where they come off for obvious reasons, it makes it easier for when it goes back. In this case they're all the same size and they're all the same type. So I'll just store them as a little pot there and you can replace them back into a different hole without any problem whatsoever. And as you can see having taken off this outer panel the reason why it wasn't coming out there is still another couple of couple of small 10mm bolts just holding it on. So we'll just go in there now. Take those off. As I say, it's a bit easier when you're putting it on because uh, you've obviously got the full instructions with the tow bar kit. And I'm I'm doing this from memory. Uh, and I have done it before, so I'm not necessarily being careful as you would the first time you're doing this. Uh, because you're slavishly following the instructions. So that's the first one out. You can see it's just hanging there, that's fine. It's not gonna go anywhere. It's just resting on this large crash cross member beam that's behind the bumper. Uh, it's quite flexible. You don't need to worry about damaging it. Um, I suppose the only thing you've gotta be really be careful of, particularly if you're on a, uh, and you've had the bottom of the bumpers re-sprayed or whatever in the body color, is just to make sure you're not scratching the paintwork. So that's those two off. 
use your body weight and as you can see we've taken away those main clips now just going to spin this round like that as you can see at the moment all that's holding it in now is the parking sensor control system just release that's you remove the bumper rest it carefully on there now so if I didn't have the mud flaps what I'll probably be doing now is just storing this on a, on a chair or something putting it on the grass or whatever but the mud flaps are taking all the weight so what you can see now is we're left with the uh, the main tow bar installation with the main nuts um, and bolts to get at. The next step is relatively simple. You take off this big crash member unit, undo some bolts from underneath and we can take it out. Or a 15mm bolt. There we are. Now because of the amount of torque I want to generate on this, I've actually just put an adapter on take it up to what fits on my torque wrench just to make it easier uh, I think these are get tightened up to about 120 newton meters I'm not sure I've still got the original instructions I'll have a look okay so just loosen those off nice and easily there's three there okay heavy this far but you just need to support it so even just resting your knee against it or whatever you'll be fine that's those two out, and then it will slide off. Yes, now this is why I remember from mine is that the tow bar here, okay, uh, at the back here on this design, prevents this from coming out. So, what we'll have to do first is to remove this cross member here of the tow bar that supports the uh, uh, the drawbar. We need to remove that first in order to allow this space to come out over the top because if you look down in here there's the hanger there that uh, it's not applicable to this car I think it must be for petrol cars the exhaust clips onto um, and that's where they, one of the exhaust uh, rubber mounts clips onto so uh, We'll need to undo these, these here, there's two here, same on the other side, we'll undo those now, there we go, so both 17s and just crack those off, so if you haven't got a torque wrench it's not necessarily the most important, uh, obviously it's more important when you're putting it on because you need to make sure it's at the right torque so it doesn't move, but you could just use a breaker bar for this. Okay, so we just get those done off loosely so that one, we've got that one, two, so they're loose and then what we'll do is we'll just undo this top one first and so I don't want to really undo all the nuts if I don't have to because I'm obviously putting this tow bar back on another car. Um, so the more I, I don't have to take apart now, the more, the less work I've got to do on the new car. So behind you've got a normal washer spring capture washer to keep the tension on the nut and the nut. So I'll just pop those there and then I've got these bolts here. We'll leave that for a moment and we'll come across the other side. Again we just repeat the process. Actually this will be a bit easier because you're pulling it towards you. The tension off so I'm going to leave those there and then this one Again, all I'm going to do is I'm going to remove this top one and I'm going to leave the bottom one in place just to pivot out of the way. So that's that one removed. As you can see, this, this whole assembly now, it's not going to fall anywhere, but uh, it's just there and it can, it can pivot down. Okay, so all I've actually done by mistake, I think, but I think we've got enough room because I've taken different nuts out on each side it doesn't matter so as you can see that now gives you just just that little drop down it's just dropped down half an inch or so it's just enough space to lift that out over the top same on the other side turn it round and you can just rest that so we'll just rest that on there for the moment 
as you can see it's not going to go anywhere um, they're a bit tricky to get those things out I'll do that off camera in a minute so you won't see it and then we're ready to progress which, with the next step which will be the removal of this main bar okay now this is quite heavy I think this is about 20 kilos so it's a good idea to have an assistant with you if you can't do that then the only other way you can do it is you get your trolley jack up under here uh, pop the depending on the design of the tow bar obviously mine's a removable one put your tow bar in just to lower it down a bit more and just put your trolley jack under there just to rest and, and spread the weight your choice I do have a very able assistant with me today who's my cameraman so what we'll do now is we'll switch off videoing and then we'll um, just undo these couple of bolts and take that down uh, okay so now we're ready to move back into the inside of the car now as you as you saw earlier obviously we removed this trim uh, and bits and pieces here that was to allow access to take the uh, tool tray out let's say if you don't have the seven seats option or you have a spare wheel or combinations of your trim here might be slightly different but I'm sure the wiring here is just the same so what we need to do now is if you just look down what we've done off camera as I said was we'll just remove those bolts um, I haven't fully withdrawn this it's just resting on the, the side bracket because of course um, I'm going to reuse this so I can't see the point in cutting that um, piece of cable tie or anything um, it's all in place clearly when we show you the video on the next car about building it in um, you'll find that most tow bars this is separate from the main bit and you've got to put those together and then wire it through but I, I'm just not going to disturb the wiring that's there so there's only two connections here um, there's no coding required on this car there is on some of the other Land Rover products um, in this case it's, it's quite literally plug and play and then the car recognizes next time you switch it on that, that you've got a tow bar attached now there's this big multi-pin plug here uh, and then there's a couple of uh, earth wires here now on the, the system I bought um, I bought a dedicated wiring kit um, and I have 13 pin you obviously may have variations at this end uh, depending whether you're um, you know you're on twin seven pin or you've just got a normal seven pin socket um, and if you haven't got a dedicated wiring kit then somebody may have uh, clipped this in using a bypass relay or whatever um, with these kind of cars it's much easier these days to buy the dedicated wiring kit so all we do now is we put this on here this is an eight mil uh, socket by the way you could obviously use a spanner if you want um, just to undo that these are held on by a couple of rings It's quite, it's quite tight this actually, I suspect it's all about maintaining a good earth connection for the rest of the electronics in the back of the car. Um, so just undo that, undo these three rings off the back which come with the kit, they're the ones the, this one is the earth for pins one to seven and then one of these, don't know which one will be the for the permanent live, in fact it says there, uh, so number 11 that's the one for the battery kit for the charger when you're going along and then this one's number nine and uh, number 10 which is the earth for the permanent live supply to your caravan so we just pop this back into there okay, it's all it's all very simple okay and we just do that up hand tight as you can see so what we now need to do is just to remove this wiring now there's a little clip it rests on essentially all you do is you just tilt put your finger behind use a screwdriver push the tang and it just slides off so this bit here engages on there as you can see slides on slides off now the car when it came is equipped with this this bit here okay they're all fitted as standard um, and you just need to plug your kit in hence why it's much easier these days if you get the dedicated wiring kit it's much safer you can't wire it up incorrectly so this one comes with the car this is a two pit two piece bit now let me just put my hand underneath okay this what you've got here that seals it so you've got this this joiner here okay which is like a little washer that gets held into the car okay as you can see so that clips into the bodywork and then you've got this rubber grommet um, on the outside now I'm hoping I don't have to unwire all this but I do have another one of these grommets so what I will do is it doesn't really matter if I stretch it over the top because of course 
I've got another one of these anyway. Okay, but what you'll need to do is just create enough of a gap for this to slide over the top. So I'll work on that now. Uh, I'm just going to rip it over the top, he says, hopefully. Okay. And it should pop back out. Now, obviously, when we did this, when the kit came, uh, the wires were loose at the other end, not fitted into the 13 pin socket. So it was much easier to to get this through. Right, what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to get my pen knife. I'm going to make this hole a little bit bigger. Okay, like that. Um, I've got the part number. We'll just go down to the Land Rover garage uh, on Monday and get a new grommet um, so that it maintains the waterproofness for the rest of the car. Just slide that through, drop that back down through the hole. Okay, you can then lift this bar away. Okay, it probably weighs about 15 kilos, so you don't unless you want to drop it on your feet or use an assistant if need be. And then all we need to do back on here, um, I'll show you this going back in now, is when you get your new grommet. So I don't have mine yet, but I'll get one. I'll get one from the Land Rover garage. Is you'll just put the rubber lip over the top, as you can see there. Okay, in the hole. Job done. So next job is to go back under the car. Uh, we've got these side brackets here. Now, obviously, you saw. Previously we have the crash bar, the crash bar goes onto here. Uh, this piece here is a replacement part for the Land Rover one. So down there, start going back to our bits of kit that came with the car. Uh, this one here is the original Land Rover uh, bracket. This goes in there and is held in place with these massive great bolts like that. We go up underneath the chassis rail through here and into what's on the top here, these what are these called captive nuts. So these are nuts that are already welded into the car during the manufacturing process. So <clears throat> we've got those two bolts to go back in. Okay. And so they replace the ones that we used on the tow bar. And then you've got these two side brackets. Now they are marked up. There's a an R there and an L there. And these go up underneath the car, I'll show you where they go in a minute. Okay, and they're part of the, the uh, equipment for hanging the exhaust shield back on. Got obviously the part of the splash guard that we've taken off. And then we've just got a whole wedge of nuts that hold the guards on. And also these nuts here that hold, that fix onto here. And hold on the various gubbins and bits and pieces underneath. So we'll leave those there for the moment <clears throat> and what we need to do now is to remove these two side brackets. Now I think, again I'll, I'll put the, I'll make sure we talk it up properly in a minute by going and looking at the uh, instruction sheet that we used to uh, build this in the first place. But you need to have a 22mm uh, ratchet bit and there are four nuts here. Okay. And these, I think, are at about 140 newton meters. Uh, again, you obviously need to follow the specific instructions for your tow bar. They may all be uh, slightly different. And actually, I'm holding the weight with my wrist as I'm doing this at the moment. So, I don't know, it's not going to drop down. There we are. Like that. And then that's the whole lot. So, what, depending on your piece of, uh, depending on which tow bar you've got, you'll then have some kind of spacer bar, okay, which um, goes in there, uh, and obviously when you do the nut, stops it from compressing these nuts on, onto there. Um, in this car, that's what they look like. So I'm just going to leave that there so I know how it all goes back together. 
and then I've got the Land Rover piece here to go back in. As you can see, it just slides in uh, like that. And that's for the uh, recovery towing eye where it fits. Now, if you look up underneath here, you can see where the bolts go. Now, obviously, in this case, it goes right the way to the end and it uses the middle two holes like that. Very, very simple and do now is I'm not going to talk them back up to 140 because I seem to remember when they came out they weren't that tight but I shall just do them a sensible amount of tightness with the torque wrench um, they're obviously a thinner nut so they shouldn't be at 140 like the ones were that came out uh, my guess is they're probably somewhere near about 100 but if I just do them like that which I mean it's getting beyond the point of having to exert quite a bit of pressure and that'll be fine in there um, and that's that bit done as we explained earlier we've got these two black brackets uh, they're marked up as we saw this one's got an R on it the other one's got an L um, so we've done all the heavy bits and pieces now uh, all the tow bars out all the main heavy bits are done so all we've got to do now is reinstate these two brackets uh, put the bumper back on under shield up make sure everything's screwed up uh, and we're good to go so as you can see it hasn't taken us too long so we're, what we need to do now we've got these two nuts here they screw onto these two bolts again that are welded into the car like we had with the, with the chassis rails. It's the same on the other side. We'll do this side, show you this going in now. So <coughs> they go in that way around, like that, and obviously the undershield clips on. I think it only screws into this one. Uh, my guess is, is that obviously maybe other exhaust systems or those of you got an under tray with the seven seater, um, it probably uses the back one. They go in quite easily, he says. As you can see, I'm only really doing them up hand tight. Uh, I'll go and get my ratchet in a minute and we'll tidy them up. So I'll do that one, we'll do the other one off camera and then come back to you in a minute. So we've just screwed back on those two um, supports that you can see. I've got the heat shield and I've just got it resting on the exhaust. Now, I say, this is a seven seater model, no spare wheel. There's plenty of variations, as you know. Um, so yours may look something slightly different from this. Just to point out that once we take, we took the support bar out of this side, there's nothing in there. So don't worry, it's just a hollow space. That's how it comes from the factory. We're gonna put the bumper back on first and, and then put the heat shield uh, back in place because the heat shield bolts up on the sides to under the bottom of the bumper. But what I'm gonna do is just whilst we've got some light here, is just show you how this goes on. Um, although we're not going to screw it at the moment. So when we lift it up, there's three holes at the very back there. It just clips over. You guide it through the various holes. The brackets at the side that you can see there, that sort of little turret bit, uh, and that just literally fixes in place with a number of uh, bolts that we've got left over from the previous kit. And these two holes that you can see at the front here, or these four holes in fact, are the captive nuts, they clip onto the bottom of the bumper, which are those original four bolts that we did in the first place. Back on it just to get hold of this bar. Okay, it's very light. Okay, as we can see, we'll do this off camera. Just offer it back up into place. Uh, like that. There's a little clip there that just goes into the hole as you can see. That just rests on there. Okay, we'll just do those bolts up and then uh, on this side we'll just push this wiring back into place where you saw earlier, like that, through there. Reattach the tape around the hole. Clip this back in there. I think actually this might be a, an airbag sensor, I'm not entirely sure, but anyway, we'll just wind that back in there. Clip all that, we'll do this off off camera and then you'll come back to you in a minute when we'll hang the bumper back. Okay, so what we've done, just got the bumper. Uh, I've just literally lifted it and it's resting on that metal cross member uh, that we saw earlier on. Now, just to make life easier now, what we're going to do is just reconnect up the screw. <clears throat> okay, and all this is doing is just taking the weight. I'm not going to do it up any particular in, in any sort of tightness. It's just literally enough here just to take the weight 
and means that we can move stuff around. Because what you'll find is the under tray fits into the underside of the bumper and we need a bit of flexibility uh, of movement. So that's just resting there at the moment, doing its thing. Um, you remember we've stood up the, if, you, if, you're, if they get stuck down there, you can always put your hand down and lift out the wiring connectors for the lights, if they're depending where they're resting in place. And what I need to do underneath now is, to, in a minute, uh, before I put the under tray on, is just to reconnect the wiring here for the various parking sensors. Now obviously, these here can only go in one way. As, as we said before, you've got the flat bit at the top, round bit at the bottom. Push them in and then the little grey tab at the back, you just push tight. Just do the same on the other side. Okay, now uh, might be able to see that a bit better. So you've got this grey locking pin at the back. If it's not, if it's already in like that, for example, just pull it out. Okay, that will allow that to connect into there. Okay, and then just push the locking pin in. That's that done. Don't worry about any of this at the moment, okay? Uh, we'll leave that loose. And then what we'll need to do in a minute, just do this off of the camera, is just to reach up and just reconnect back together with a click the main uh, parking sensor wiring. Again, you may not have that depending on the, the specification of your car. So what we'll do now is um, we'll put the under tray rest on here as we did before start getting it screwed up and then you'll see the reason we leave this loose is that the lip of the under tray goes over there and bolts through and that holds that really firmly uh, in place. It might be a bit trickier with ours because we've got the mud flaps on it but we'll, that's hence why I'm just leaving it um, a bit looser just so that you can see what do. So nuts at the back. I don't know if the camera can pick this up leaning right the way through but we just clip on like this, you just have to be careful because of this heat shield material. Little bits can stick out, uh, and they can, they're, they're one of those things, it's a bit like roses, rose thorns. I'll just go straight through your fingers really quickly. So, you just need to be really careful. If they're sticking up, don't be tempted to put your finger on and press them in. Use the weight of the washer, uh, sorry, the nut, just to squeeze that through. So, that'll become clear now. You can now see where we put that bracket in earlier on up the top there. Uh, this all starts screwing into place. Now, whilst the camera is there, you can see what I mean. You can see why we've left this nice and loose now, because we just need to jiggle that around here, okay, for those bolts to go through and, and lock up into the bumper. So we'll just leave that loose-ish at the moment in place, okay? We'll do the same here on the other side. see the, the, the other bolts come through here. Three bolts there. We'll do those up in a minute off camera and then we'll just jiggle that bumper through like that so it's all it's all loosely fits into place. Okay so what we'll do off camera now okay is we'll do up all these bolts and bits and pieces you can see how it goes. It's how you reattach the side of this bumper because it looks a bit brutal um, but I promise you this is the only way to do it. So you take one of these tangs and you find it in the gap. Okay, just lift it. They are really robust, trust me. And then you just push them in, okay? And you just do that. And that's the bumper back in place. And then as we showed you earlier, you do the screw up, push all this clip in, and then uh, tuck all this stuff back in place under here. Right, so, um, we won't show you to put these in because obviously we we looked at how to take them out and as all good manuals say it's the reverse of taking them apart. But just so you can see, again it only goes in one way. Just clip that in like that. Place this green holder in those two holes there. Okay, it just simply slides in and then all you need to do is just slide slide it into place um, and it just clicks in do the screw up from behind so I'm, I'm not going to show you that <clears throat> this here as you can see you've got these fangs they go into these 
sort of slits there. So it's a simple push in and clump down. Your tray will go back in in a minute. But we'll, deal, we'll do that in a minute. And then where you've got this lip has come out, just tap it back into place. If it starts doing that, run your hand up behind so it's all nice and smooth. Okay, we'll deal with all that uh, ourselves later on. If we just look down under the car now. Okay, as you can see, we put all these screws back in. Okay, we've reconnected the bumper uh, with the bottom of the under tray. The only job to do now, uh, and I won't show you this, is to grab your supports here for the uh, exhaust, lift the exhaust up with your, uh, with your jack, screw those back up into place, and then we'll just insert that, uh, the silver deco panel clips into those couple of slots there and do those nuts up. Hopefully and you found this uh, video helpful. Uh, as I say, we'll, a uh, couple of weeks time, we'll do this the other way around. Uh, we'll put a tow bar on from you and then obviously you can choose which video suits yourself. Uh, and we'll also um, be looking at how to put some mud flaps on the car as well. Okay, again, another really simple job. Why bother paying the dealer to do? Hopefully you find it useful. If you do, add a comment. If you don't, add a comment as well and tell us how we can make it better. Okay, so till next time, Goodbye.